I'm Colin Walls and I'm here once again to talk about embedded software. Today I'm going to talk about something slightly less technical really. I'm going to look at a, a recent trend in embedded software which I think is pretty interesting. Now what I've noticed in many years of experience of embedded software is that uh, fashion is what it's all about. Now what I mean is not that embedded software engineers wear the trendiest clothes. I'm sure, I'm sure some do, but in general, um, that isn't a characteristic we look for in engineers. What I mean is fashions in technology. Every few years, something new comes along, something new which is a technology or a product, and it's gonna be the next big thing. Everybody's excited about it. It's the headline at conferences. If one does a seminar or whatever one is, you get a big sign up. And then after a while, something else comes along. It doesn't mean each of these technologies goes away. It simply means that it becomes less of the flavor of the month. To give you some examples of this over the years, there was C++, uh, UML, low power design, Windows CE, Java. Um, what else was there? Eclipse, USB was very exciting at one point. Uh, Linux, embedded Linux and most recently multi-core and of course the uh, internet of things these are all technologies that have come along and have been important none of those have gone away they're all technologies just about that uh, have some relevance to embedded software today but they were were the big thing in their time so what's coming next it's interesting to try and predict what the next fashion is now i don't have a crystal ball actually i don't like predicting stuff I've seen too many people uh, look fairly stupid by predicting what the future is going to be like and getting it wrong. But I'm feeling lucky today. I'm going to go against that trend and talk about what I think is uh, going to be pretty much a headline for the next year or two anyway. And that is RISC-V. Now, RISC-V is a CPU architecture. It's open source. It's an open architecture. Anyone can gain access to it. Anyone can utilize it in whatever way they want. It's an architecture but not an implementation of the CPU which gives you enormous flexibility and the architecture is designed intrinsically to be customizable and extendable. This means you can build a CPU which has a standard instruction set but has additional functionality that you have added for your particular application. Now there's various reasons why that might be good but a particular one that comes to mind is if you're building a multi-core application and you want multiple CPUs. Now, normally, you can build multi-core in a couple of ways. You can use um, a uh, homogenous multi-core chip where you've got numerous CPUs of the same architecture. That's great because you only have to learn how to program one architecture. You can run a um, SMP operating system across them if you want. You can use the same tools on them. There's lots of advantages of having the same architecture across the, the chip. On the other hand, what's very commonly done is to have a heterogeneous multi-core where you have different CPU architectures doing different jobs where they're more optimal for each job and each one runs its own operating system, you need a set of tools for it, and you need the expertise to handle the different CPU architectures. So each of those approaches ha has its place. What RISC-V gives us is a sort of middle ground. If you use RISC-V for all the CPUs, some of them may be customized to do particularly useful things, but ultimately they're all the same architecture, which means you can probably use the same tools, the same operating system, and basically the same set of expertise across the whole system. There's less learning and less investment in tools. Why do I think this is the next big, big thing? Well, simply that it's been around for a few years and I've been keeping an eye on it. It's been quite interesting. And But all of a sudden, there are a whole bunch of uh, vendors producing tools for it, producing operating systems. And that seems to have happened in the last year or 18 months, something like that. So I can only see that as being a future trend. A kind of support that is particularly needed for RISC-V, of course, is toolchain tool tool customization. What that means is if you have a RISC-V processor with some extensions, you want your tools to be able to take advantage and utilize those extensions. And there are a number of companies around who can help you with just that. 
So as I said, support is popping up all over the place and you need to investigate what options there are. But it'll be interesting to look back in, uh, in a year or so to see how much Risk Five has taken off. Go take a look at it, it's really interesting. That's it for today, I'll be back sometime soon with something else on embedded software. But for now, I'll say 